So now I want to head back to the OK Corral and catch that gunfight. You know, if we're going to be here, we got to have a Sioux City sarsaparilla because I didn't see any tombstone sarsaparillas anywhere. You don't think there'd be a gunfight today, would you? All right, we are in. We are in the OK Corral where it all happened. Where the Earp Brothers and Doc Holliday walked down forth, eventually making their way here and having that confrontation with the three cowboys. 1800s toilet, huh? The cribs of Tombstone. Did Wyatt Earp kill Johnny Ringo? McClory. In memory, died October 26, 1881. Those were the McClory brothers, Thomas and Robert. One owes respect to the living, but to the dead, one owes nothing but the truth. Erected by the McClory family. Now they have a movie here that you can watch and it's narrated by Vincent Price. How cool is that? But they have hand-drawn map of Wyatt Earp's route that day. And then here you can see the actual site right here. And they've got mannequins of each person in their respective spots. And then we're gonna actually go on the streets of Tombstone Theater right there where they're gonna reenact that gunfight. So basically all the men to the left were the Earp Brothers and Doc Holliday. All the men in black. So over here you have Tom McLory, Frank McLory, Ike Clanton. Ike Clanton being right here in the front. And then Billy Clanton right here. And then Virgil Earp, Morgan Earp, Wyatt Earp and Doc Holliday in the back with a shotgun. Now I've read that they said that a lot of people always really love Doc Holliday out of this story mostly because he lived his life and all the books that were written about him detail his life as being basically a guy who just knew he wasn't going to live very long and lived pretty reckless. So here's the other side of that blue building that we first saw when we came into town and we read about how their bodies were all displayed there and that's where that photo was taken. And now we get to see it all reenacted. Streets of Tombstone right here, and right in the dead center is the Oriental Saloon. That's where we first saw the gunfight earlier. My house, Tucson. Uh, Doc and Wyatt. Was a bus. Plenty of money to be had, not get rubbed off on me, you see. <laughs> but enough about me. How is respectable business treating you? Well, Doc Tombstone's a place to be. As a matter of fact, you can pluck the money right off the trees out here. Now you said that same thing about Dodge City. Well, no, it's different this time, Doc, and that's that. I'm through risking my neck, strictly on the up and up. It's true, don't give me that face. I've been on my best behavior. Well, that is until the elections are over. Isn't that right, Wyatt? Yeah, I see you've heard my intentions. Oh, I can already picture it. Wyatt, County Sheriff, you have not changed at all. It's like Clint, Doc. He's on a war path again, but this time he's gunning for you. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah, he's got it in his head. You've been telling people he had something to do with that Benson State holder. <laughs> what if I have? I Clint is no good yellow... yellow-bellied snake in the grass rolling over on his friends like that. And all for what? Some blood money from Wells Fargo? Look, I understand your concern, but I made that deal with Knight to begin with. Well, of course you did. Look, he'd get all the money, I'd get all the glory. I'm sure, that would help me come election time. Does that make me a snake in the grass? No, Wyatt, you are a bad jig gun. You're doing your job. Ike Clinton has no such excuse. A man who would sell out his friends like that? Well, he's got no business living. I guess in that case, Doc, why don't you mind your own business where this is concerned? If I comes my way, it becomes my business, Wyatt. And you know how I handle my business the proper way. Ah, <laughs> Look, us herbs are doing well here in this town, Doc. That Oriental's a gold mine. Burgess Town Marshal and I'm well on my way to becoming county sheriff. So please, you don't need any interferences whatsoever. All right, Wyatt. I won't be the one to interfere with your little plans. That's all I ask. But enough of this talk. Why don't you show me to your best bottle of whiskey? Don't mind if I do. Doc, you're still drinking all over, all right? So go back down there, show them who's boss. No, we ain't going back to the Yellow Alpha, all right? That's just trouble we don't need. But I need! There's another drink. You could use one, too. What? Maybe you should slow down. Don't you think you've had enough? Had enough? Don't you try to roll me in. 
Rear five, come on. I've only ever told the truth about you. You're a drunken fool. Oh, hey, we're for drinks. Here. Not to worry, Tom. Nothing will come of this. You see, I talk, and he talks, but he never quite backs up any of those threats. No, sir, he is just a coward. You watch your mouth, Holiday. Don't make me kill you. I'll prove your words. I, you have threatened me. You've threatened them, Earth boys, and I'm sick of hearing it. What do you say we settle this little blood feud here now? Fine by me. Hey, I'm not rightly fixed for a fight. Get that big talk, shove it way up. Oh. I ought to kill you anyway. Do this town a favor. Oh, it would be so easy. All right, well, let's go. Let's, let's come on. Trouble. Get him out of here. He's pouring a gun at my What? This gun? That's enough. I said clear out before you get more fight than you can handle. Arrest him. Tom, you check that gun. It's your responsibility. Yeah, yeah. So long, Mr. Earp. I am suddenly born. All this fighting talk to a close there. We're boys the holiday. I'm waiting for him come morning. Uh, no! Holiday! Get out of there. You said you want to finish it, so come finish it. Housekeeping. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Doc. Well, Somebody, I uh, I was looking for holiday. If I seen you first, I <coughs> killed you too. Sorry to disappoint you. Morgan, take him to jail. I'm fine to Judge Wallace. Yep. If I still had my gun, we could fight with you and the whole life on me. Fight so bad, take it back. Morgan! I can be making threats to my family for months now. He has every right to gun you down. Now, he won't do it, but he'd be right. More get him inside. Get that bottle away from him. Get him inside, bottle. Get that bottle. You're with your pal Holiday in the Ike earlier? Yeah, he's a fool when he's drunk, but he's harmless. You had no call roughing him up like that. He's waving guns around town, making threats. He's lucky to be alive. Well, who do you think you are, Herb? You come down here and tell us how to live like a Dodge City pimp? Anything I said? I heard every word you said, but this is Ike's problem. Ike's problem? You see how the Earths and that Lung have been treating him? It ain't right and you know it. He does this everywhere we go. He gets a few drinks in him, thinks he can whip his weight, Wildcats. I'm sick of it. That's your brother. If you can't even back your own brother's play, why do we even keep you around? Then what if he's wrong? What if he gets us all killed? Your hands off. I can't be fun. Peyton is fine. He's free to go. I want you to get him out of here and let everything settle down. You know, as a matter of fact, I don't want to see any more cowboys the rest of the day. Now, Herb, you got no right talking to us like that. I'll talk to you any way I please. I'm the marshal of this town. You're nothing but stage robbers and horse thieves. Uh, sure, Behan might not care what goes on between here and Mexico. I do. Behan is a smart man. Mm. He leaves us alone. It's a long, happy life, too. Unlike some people. <laughs> you making threats again, Ike? No, Morgan! When I say men die, they die. Yeah. All right, that's enough. Ike, you don't scare me. 
done with men like you my whole life, you understand that? I'll go down to Charleston, down to San Simone. I'll fight any man in your gang. If you touch my family, boy, I will kill you. Tough talk, coming from a dead man. No, you try to run us out of town. But look, we're still here. We ain't leaving either. This ends today. I am done talking. Let's go, boys. Boys here any minute. What about their big guns? Curly Bill, Johnny Ringo? No, don't even worry about that. I get himself shot, it's more spoils than the rest of them. You know why? At the rate he's gone? <coughs> that just might happen. He's drunk and suspicious. Those about that deal with me to turn in them stage robbers. Hey! Hey, that's not none of yours. Well, Virgil, there are more cowboys hanging in town, and word has it they're gunning for you. Looks to me like you're gonna need all the friends you can get. We can find those cowboys just fine on our own, Doc. No, they're not far from here. Hold up in a nifty lot off Fremont Street behind the OK Corral. They look to me business and boys. They've got guns. Then we will disarm them. Come on. You're gonna do it my way. I want you to hang back. Hold on to this. Let's go. You heard what they were calling us, Bill? Calling us horse thieves and, and stage robbers? We are horse thieves on account of all the horse thievery and then there's the stage robbing. Billy, you know none of us like you, right? Well, what are we going to do now? When the Europe get here, we let them have it, Bill. Now, you don't think we're going to like, kill them no, with guns? No, 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 nothing like that. We're going to go down to the F-Town, put an A in card and paper, big black border. No, we're going to kill them. They have to pay for the way they treat us. Now, we can leave right now. Well, wait! Yeah! Yeah! Hey, boys, we're looking for a fight. Now you can have one. Go up your hands. We're here for your guns. Hold us up, whatever. Don't shoot. Have an arm. I got one left for you. Holiday. Blaze away, Frank. You know Daisy if you do. No Daisy at all. I look like it hurt. It didn't hurt. Give me that gun, boy. I see you moving. No, just let me die. Well, that was it. Over before it ever started. Now, the books will say 30 shots in 30 seconds. However, I was not counting. Neither were you. <laughs> Two months after this gunfight, Virgil Earp was ambushed outside the Crystal Palace Saloon. Three shotguns went off, but he still refused to die. Crippled up pretty bad, Virg wandered the West until death found him in Nevada in 1905. Not as lucky was Wyatt's kid brother Morgan. Shot in the back and killed, played a game of pool up on Allen Street. Morgan died at midnight, March 19, 1882. His brother Wyatt's birthday. Now in 1887, the year this whole town began to fall apart, the two main causes of this gunfight died hundreds of miles apart from each other. That summer, while starting a new gang up in northern Arizona, Ike Clanton was shot and killed by a male order, de order detective. Not long after that, after a lifetime of drinking and smoking, tuberculosis caught up with yours truly up in Colorado. I don't care to talk about it. <laughs> now Wyatt Earp was the last man standing out of all this. He'd spend his days traveling. He made his way from Idaho to Alaska, finally ending up in Jazz Age Hollywood, searching for the next tombstone and a chance to get things right again. He never would find it. When Wyatt died in 1929, just shy of his 81st birthday, his final words, suppose, suppose. And that, folks, was our show. So let's check out Doc Holliday's room in Fly's boarding house. Not much of a room, no bed or anything, but a couple of chairs right here. Well, there's no question it's very touristy, but it was still a good time. I hope you guys enjoyed it.
Well, my friends, I think we're gonna call it a day for Tombstone, but don't worry, I will come back in the future because there's quite a bit more to do in this town and you're looking at it, so. Thank you, Eric Farqua, Brian Edward Lowell, and Vian or Vian Smith for becoming my newest Patreons. Thank you everyone for watching. We'll see you again on the flip side. Have a great night and goodbye.